August 1954. The last Peacemaker is delivered. B-36 number 383 rumbles off the production line and into the history books. This mammoth bomber, designed and created to be the ultimate Cold War Terminator, serves its purpose well. For the first time in the history of military conflict, distance as a strategic barrier vanishes. With the launch of the massive Peacemaker airframe, the Soviet Empire's legendary shelter, symbolized by its 11 time zones, is simply swept aside. It never dropped a bomb in anger, but merely by its unnerving presence, the destructive potential of this intimidating Avenger guaranteed America's freedom. As the largest and most powerful bomber ever built, the B-36 launched the process that would ultimately lead to the demolition of the Iron Curtain and shrouding Soviet communism. Several of us volunteers came to the rescue of this B-36 in late 1992 under the direction of Neil Anderson and Gordon England. The fence was taken down, the outer panels removed from the airplane, hooked onto the airplane with a log chain because the only way we could pull it, we pulled it into run station one uh, in late uh, 1992. We made a complete assessment of the airplane when it was uh, parked in the run station and it was in pretty deplorable condition. All of the magnesium on the airplane was completely uh, deteriorated and the sails were in real bad shape and uh, all of the magnesium uh, was really in a deplorable condition. The landing gears had never been touched for 20, 25 years and had to be completely refurbished. The uh, airplane had about eight coats of paint and it took us three months to, to strip this, uh, all the paint off and put new uh, material on the exterior of the airplane. The cockpit area was completely demolished. Somebody had uh, vandalized all the instruments. There wasn't any instruments in the airplane when we got it. We started the restoration by disassembling the airplane, uh, laying it into sections. We've uh, got it completely demated. Outer panels is off of it. The forward and fuselage is demated. And uh, we've had as many as uh, 105 people in a, in a day working on the airplane during its refurbishment. The craftsmanship that has been used in this airplane are absolutely superb. And these guys can just about pretty well make anything that goes in an airplane. If we don't have it available, if we can't get it, why well, we can make it. And in most cases, that's how this was accomplished. After completion, uh, we started the airplane and took it over to the paint shop. Uh, we put some 57 feet, 4 by 12 foot, uh, on the exterior of the airplane. The leading edges all had to be replaced. The interior has been stripped out and completely repainted. All the trimming edges now have been replaced. 
And uh, then most, all of the airplane right now has been uh, completely repainted inside and out. Following final painting of all of the external surfaces, Air Force identification, rare Strategic Air Command logo and banner were applied to the aircraft. The horizontal tail has been completely redone. The vertical fin has been repainted. The nacelle areas are all complete, all refurbished and repainted. The trailing edges are in the same condition. The landing gear has been refurbished and retracted, and the airplane is ready to be reassembled. In the cockpit area, we had four of the throttles that were broken off and two of the jet throttles were broken, and we've made those from scratch. We made about 60% of the instruments from uh, silk screens and what have you uh, when we put the cockpit back together. The flight engineer's panel is completely uh, outfitted now with all of, all of the instruments. The airplane looks like when you go inside of it now and look at all of the equipment installed that you could sit down and crank the airplane up and go fly. All the seats have been refurbished, the, the tables have been redone, the carpeting has been uh, reinstalled in all of the areas, all of the instruments and all of the systems have been uh, reinstalled. tunnel has been redone. All of the bunks in the aft cabin have been completely refurbed and all new uh, covers put on all of those. We're down to detail, even to the first aid kits that are installed in the uh, forward and aft cabin. It's complete pretty well now and we're waiting to uh, put it back together. It uh, will take us about three months to uh, reassemble the airplane when we have a place to uh, put it together, which would be at the Lions Airport. In its day, it was powerful, relentless, and inexhaustible. A proud warrior and an awe-inspiring icon of democracy. Once capable of navigating vast distances and rendering destructive force almost beyond the scope of human comprehension, B-36 number 383 is now retired from its distinguished service to its country. Restored to its original glory, number 383 serves now as a shrine to America's commitment to freedom and as a monument to those Americans whose determination and dedication brought her back to greatness. After 12 years and 44,000 man hours, the restoration team is notified that the aircraft will have to be moved. Lockheed Martin needs its hangar space to build F-16s and the new F-35.
Then one day, the Air Force notifies Lockheed Martin that the aircraft will go to Pima Museum, Tucson, Arizona. Last to leave is the giant wing. A special trailer has to be brought in to move this massive wing. The giant crane lifts the 22 ton wing so that the trailer can be backed underneath it. The next morning, with Carswell Air Force Base in Fort Worth behind it, this massive wing starts on its journey west. wing was built in this plant 51 years ago, now heads west for its final resting place. As the wing moves west and Fort Worth says goodbye to a major part of its history, it will be reassembled at the Pima Museum, Tucson, Arizona, so the world will be able to see this magnificent machine in its glory. three days, the wing will arrive at Tucson, Arizona, its final resting place.